Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Caitlin Labby, and I will be your host for today. Just a few housekeeping items before we go ahead and get started. Today's webinar uh, will be recorded, and folks will receive a copy of that webinar after the session. Uh, if you have questions today, we'd love for you to participate, and we invite you to put those questions in the questions toolbar to the right of your screen. It is now my pleasure to, inter to introduce you to Harry Huberti with our insurance team, and I will kick it off with him for further introductions and to dive into content. So Harry, go ahead and take it away. Thanks for the introduction, Caitlin. Uh, as Caitlin mentioned, my name is Harry Huberti, and I lead the executive insurer research for the insurance practice at IT Novarica Group. I'm joined this afternoon by Martina Conlin, who's the head of our property casualty executive partner service, and by Nancy Casparo, a senior principal from our life annuity benefits practice. Nancy and Martina, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here. Great to be here. And uh, moving to our next slide, um, I assume most of you will be familiar with IT Novarica Group. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar. But for those of you who are joining us for the first time, maybe, uh, we are a research and advisory firm that works with insurance companies and financial services organizations to help them answer questions of technology, strategy, and operations. Um, our insurance practice has grown out of Heritage Novarica and uh, works with uh, about 150 insurance clients uh, as part of our executive partner service, as well as a, a smaller number of solution provider clients. Um, prior to the start of these webinars, we like to share a brief antitrust statement, just to remind us all that uh, the purpose of this gathering is to uh, discuss the exchange of information, not uh, participate in any sort of price fixing, territory carving, boycotts or collusion. And finally, the agenda for this afternoon's webinar. Uh, we will kick off the session by uh, briefly going over our budgets and project study, uh, which we're pleased to share preliminary data from this afternoon. And uh, then we'll also uh, we'll dive into the major sections of that survey. Um, first, primarily, uh, insurer IT budgets and staffing, and then the second, the projects half, focusing on insurer IT projects and priorities, both for the coming 2023 year. Um, we'll leave some time at the end for open discussion, but as Caitlin mentioned, uh, on the right side of your <laughs> webinar display, you should be able to see a question function. And please feel free to ask questions of uh, myself, Martina, and Nancy as the discussion continues. We're happy to pause the conversation and uh, bring in some audience participation. Um, I encourage you to use that feature. Uh, so with no further ado, uh, our annual budgets and projects study is uh, framed from and drawn from our Insurance Technology Research Council, which is a moderated knowledge sharing community of nearly 400 senior insurance technology executives. We generally focus on the highest level insurance technology person at a given company, usually CIO or equivalent. And research council members have the opportunity to participate in our research on insurance and technology related topics. Um, council members are also invited to attend gatherings of peer technology executives to exchange knowledge and discuss best practices over the course of the year. Um, in particular, we're excited to be finalizing the plans for our annual uh, CIO council meeting in late April or early May of 2023. Uh, so please watch this space. We'll be excited to share details uh, of that meeting with you shortly. The Research Council contributes to four major annual studies and a variety of smaller studies over the course of the year. There is an emerging technology study that goes live in Q1 that focuses on cases and pilot activity for technologies that are more horizontal in application, maybe proving their use case in the insurance sphere. We have an annual case study compendium report that's associated with our impact awards that recognizes insurer IT initiatives that have created real business value for the companies that have uh, enacted them. 
Uh, we have a high-level technology benchmarking study that focuses on technology-enabled capabilities called the AN100. And finally, uh, the study that we're discussing today, IT budgets and projects, which covers at a high level insurer IT spend, IT staffing, and strategic priorities. Next slide. And a little bit more about the budgets and project study, as I mentioned, covers spend, staffing, and strategic priority. Insurers uh, share high-level information about their IT resourcing, including their spending ratio, which is to say their IT budget expressed as a percentage of their overall annual written premium, uh, their staffing ratio, which is the percentage of the total insurer headcount that the IT function makes up, and uh, also IT expense broken down in a couple of different ways, including uh, operational expense and capital expense, and also run, grow, transform breakouts. On the projects and priorities side, uh, insurers share high-level information about the top capabilities that uh, their business partners want IT to deliver, top IT challenges and priorities, um, system capability self-assessments, and areas of technology, uh, excuse me, technological investment, uh, including particularly uh, efforts to replace or uh, make major enhancements to existing systems uh, within, the insurance, uh, within the insurer's tech stack. Uh, finally, there are some brief sections at the end that cover current and planned adoption of IT security and operational best practices. We don't have a chance to cover the latter today, but those will be included uh, in the final report when it is published. 